We're back now with Lilith Quillen and Sarah Beth Grossman, whose children have been diagnosed with conduct disorder. They're part of a Facebook group, Parents of Children with Conduct Disorder, and have been inspired by Dawn Davies' bravery in coming forward and her appearance on our show in February, as well as moved by the shooting in Parkland, Florida, they say. And they have now mobilized an effort for a new nonprofit. Um, so what, what, what is your son, your youngest son now doing to protect himself? We found a butter knife hidden underneath his pillow to protect himself. Your little guy, he's scared. He's, he's nine, he's delayed himself. He's about functioning at a five or six year old level. So often people look at moms like you and say, oh, it's a parenting <laughs> issue, right? I know, Amy, you had, a, had a, an issue in the grocery store, was it, or in the store? Yeah, so I have my daughter 14 and I have my five-year-old and Lily was looking at some items and Evan caught something and started a tantrum tantrum because he couldn't reach it or whatnot. And this woman was behind me and we were in one of those locked jaw aisles and she said point blank to me, can you please get your kid in check? And I said very kindly, because I try to do it with some compassion back, may you never be touched with mental illness or a brain disorder. His brain isn't letting him process what's in front of him. And it's not a parenting issue. If it were a parenting issue, Don wouldn't have two perfectly functioning children. Right. Four, sorry. <laughs> wow, four. <laughs> or myself have Lily, who's amazing. Right. She's an honor student. She's well-rounded. So it's not a parenting issue. And she also, we had locks on our doors, but he broke them off the doors. Mm -hmm. So you have to do what you have to do, and it's not a parenting issue. Uh, I want to bring in Kent Keel, who's a professor of psychology and neuroscience at the University of New Mexico. Um, and has literally written the book on psychopath, psychopathic behavior, which is not what these children are. The, the DSM-5 does not allow that term, recognize that term for people under 18. Um, this is conduct disorder, which is what, Kent? Uh, conduct disorder is a constellation of different behavioral traits, many of which you've already heard about this morning. So acting out, aggression um, towards others, um, impulsivity, you know, not planning well, uh, anger, outbursts, these types of things. There's, there's a lot of different items that go into the diagnosis of conduct disorder. And when you have some of them and for a long period of time and f uh, at a certain severity level, then the, the diagnosis fits. It starts with conduct disorder. That's the, that's the first step that we typically see. Is it, if you get this diagnosis of conduct, conduct disorder with uh, callousness, is that what it is? Um, so the DSM-5 has what's called with limited pro-social emotions right now. That's their specifier, their moniker. And then those are things like the lack of empathy, guilt, and remorse. So after they've done something bad, how do they address it? Are they, are they concerned about it? Or if they're not concerned about it, you know, if they, if they say, I'll do it again, or other types of things, they can be outwardly callous. And that's the, so that's the two together are the ones that... If you that, get that diagnosis, yeah. if, you, if that's what the doctor says, yeah. do, does that mean your child is destined to become a sociopath no, or not a, psych at all. a psychopath? No, not at all. Um, so you can stop it. it? Well, so most of the... 80% of kids that get a diagnosis of conduct disorder are going to age out of those problems and not have problems as adults. The when? same problems. When? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, it's <laughs> going to be, um, it's usually in their 20s, you know, so they're going to age out. So antisocial behavior generally peaks in adolescence. So that's the time window where most of us, you know, me included, did something that might have gotten in trouble or little things like that. To get a diagnosis, though, you, that's, that's behavioral diagnosis, like conduct disorder, it's more severe. I mean, you're, on, you're getting yourself into the, the, the higher risk group. And there's and, not a medication, there's not a simple no. fix for it. But it's interesting to hear you, Lilla, say yeah. your son is 18 and now you do feel like there's been improvement. Do you, you have hope that he may be coming out the other side of this? I do, actually, which is really amazing because this time of year ago I did not have hope at all. My hope was that I could make or do what I could to make him less bad. And which that is, would be a success. And that would be a success. And I don't know if you can comprehend less bad as a parenting goal. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's pretty overwhelming, but I, I do feel like at this point, um, he has really pulled it out in the last five months. I mean, even his birthday is in November and in October, a month before his birthday, my husband and I were looking at each other going, he's he's not going to grow out of this. It's, you know, it's going to continue. This is our reality. And, and yeah. that is the truth for so many parents, that it is their reality and it stays their reality. And the system is not nearly set up 
to support these families in any way, shape, or form. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.